Fireside Christmas Short Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Fireside Christmas Short Stories by Various. Grandmother's Christmas Story by Faith Wynne. Henrietta and Roland and Frank were spending the holidays at Grandmother's and among the many gifts for the children there was a book full of pictures for henrietta and her brown head was bent over it very earnestly for at least ten minutes and she exclaimed bringing in the yule log what does that mean grandmother and grandmother replied it was an ancient english custom to have a log cut from the largest tree in the park on the last day of the christmas holidays and on the following christmas eve it was dragged in and placed upon the immense dogs on either side of the wide hearth those who dragged it in sang the while a carol commencing come bring with a noise my merry merry boys the christmas log to the firing it was then kindled with a brand from last year's christmas fire that had been kept for the purpose and with the light of this huge yule log the great hall or dining apartment would be in a rich warm glow how perfectly lovely cried the impulsive roland springing upon grandmother's lap and giving her a quick little hug while henrietta and frank drew near with eager faces please tell us more can't you tell us a story said henrietta either about christmas or new years and let it begin when i was a little girl said roland that's just like roland said frank he would always rather a story should commence when i was a little girl or boy than once upon a time well suppose i commence once upon a time when i was a little girl said grandmother smiling at the three satisfied nods once upon a time when i was a little girl i spent the holidays with my parents in england visiting some dear friends the little daughter elsie was about my own age and she had two little cousins visiting her one from germany named gretchen and one from france named adele on christmas eve we fell into quite a dispute Elsie and I were quite sure Santa Claus, with his sleigh and reindeer, would soon be prancing over the roof, whose peaks I feared would prevent his reaching the chimney in safety, when Gretchen said, St. Nicholas was the one who brought gifts, and he rode upon a white horse, carrying a basket on one arm, filled with toys for the good children, and holding in his hand a bundle of switches for the naughty disobedient ones our presents said adele are generally brought on new year's eve instead of christmas by a young maiden dressed in white with long white hair flowing over her shoulders and a gold crown upon her head set round with burning tapers in one hand she holds a silver bell and in the other a basket of sweetmeats we decided finally that we must not quarrel for fear the bundle of switches might be left for us and so Elsie, Adele, and I hung up our stockings, and Gretchen knelt before the wide fireplace and held out her little apron, begging St. Nick to let fall a pretty gift. And then she polished her little shoes and filled them with oats for St. Nick's white horse and set them in the fireplace. While we were thus engaged, we heard the blowing of a horn. Hark! said Elsie, there are the mummers she ran to the window and we followed wondering and a little frightened but we only saw in the moonlight six human figures dressed grotesquely who elsie told us went from house to house on christmas eve and were ever admitted giving a rude kind of dramatic performance elsie's father invited them in and gave the best that his hospitable board afforded as was the custom of the times were the oats all gone from gretchen's shoes interrupted roland whose mind had been dwelling more upon this part of the story than upon the mummers yes 
when the Christmas bells rang out their silvery chimes on Christmas morning, we jumped up and ran downstairs to find the little shoes filled with toys and sweetmeats, and our stockings were so full as to have lost the shape of stockings. After breakfast we were invited into a room wreathed in evergreen, smelling sweet and fresh and wholesome, where a beautiful Christmas tree met our astonished eyes. It had all been arranged so quietly that we knew nothing of it. After breakfast, the good mistress of the house sent out generous rations of beef and bread to the poor, and asked each of us to share our gifts with less favoured children, that we too might know the blessedness of giving as well as receiving. I wonder if you know, my dears, that our Christmas tree originated in Germany, and our Christmas stocking in Belgium, while the Merry Christmas and Happy New Year is the old English greeting shouted from window to street and street to window. It is a beautiful custom, wherever originated, of laying down old animosities with the old year, and beginning the new year with good will to all men. And when the bells ring out the old year and ring in the new, Grandmother hopes her children will correct their little faults and ask the good father to help you to overcome them before they become so strong that they will overcome you. And now, as you have had a merry, merry Christmas, may you have a happy new year. End of Grandmother's Christmas Story by Faith Wynne Recording by Ruth Golding